Hey, hey! What's going on, man? Not a whole heck of a lot. What's going on with you? Same. I feel like we have the same intro every week because six days apart, nothing's happened, nothing of any report. So, we're here to game! That's what we're here to do. I believe it is your turn to do the research today for our first for our first phase of this battle, so why don't you tell us about it? So, we all know the Emperor Justinian is trying to reform the entirety of the Roman Empire that fell over 100 years ago. This campaign is the one major step forward in that reformation. Now, the victory at Dar was the first major Byzantine-Roman triumph in the field against the Persians in over a century. And although they didn't acquire any new lands, they did sign a peace treaty with the Sassanids, which secured those eastern borders. And this gives Justinian the opportunity to look back towards the west. However, the situation in Constantinople became a little volatile. The chariot races in the capital often led to clashes between supporters of different teams. If you will, there are chariot hooligans. And these chariot hooligans started a rebellion that lasted five days. They even coordinated a new emperor during these riots. Justinian used the guard command by Belisarius to crush it, however, and over 30,000 people were massacred and amongst the burned buildings was an earlier version of the Hagia Sophia, the Grand Church. Justinian wanted to rebuild this church and make it the most glorious building in the world. But to do that, he required funds to pay for construction. Plus, his prestige had been tarnished during these riots. And a new opportunity in the West gives him the chance to acquire both. Now, in the 5th century, the territory of the Western Empire is divided between all these Germanic tribes. Among these are the Vandals, who established their kingdom in Roman Africa and the islands of the Western Mediterranean. In 530 AD, the Vandal king Hilderic, who had been on friendly terms with Justinian, was disposed and imprisoned by his, co his cousin, Gallimer. Gallimer took the throne, but he lacks legitimacy and he belongs to an Aryan confession of Christianity, which some consider to be a little heretical. Justinian demanded that Hilderic be restored or sent to Constantinople, but Gelimer refuses, and this gives Justinian all the cause he needs. As soon as the situation in the capital is stabilized, the Roman emperor begins preparing an expedition against the Vandals. Belisarius, once again, is appointed the commander and given about 20,000 soldiers. In June of 533, Belisarius set sail for Africa. Now, a previous attempt to retake Africa had failed in 468 as the Vandalic fleet destroyed the Roman navy. But luckily this time for Belisarius, the majority of the enemy vessels and at least 5,000 of their foot soldiers are sailing towards Sardinia to quell a rebellion against Gelimer. Now, the Roman forces land about 150 kilometers southeast of the Vandal capital of Carthage and quickly proceeded up the coast, keeping their ships and army together as they went. Belisarius restrained his men from attacking the locals, and as a result, this meant gates of cities were open to him, and the locals provided him with provisions, and the army wasn't hindered. Now, this landing near Carthage had surprised Gelimer. At this point, he was moving against another rebellion, this time a rebellion of Moors in the south. He had to stop and turn back, towards his capital. It's at this point, he ordered the execution of his cousin Hilderic and some other prisoners. The Vandal forces were divided with 6,000 under Gelimer's brother Amatus in Carthage and 9,000 with Gelimer. Gelimer ordered his brother to move out of the city and block the Romans near the 10th mile marker, which in Latin is Ad Decium, which gives us the name of our battle. Meanwhile, Gelimer is getting closer to the area. He detaches 2,000 cavalry under his nephew Gibbamund to secure the flank by holding the way through the salt flats to the west, leaving for himself another 7,000 troops. This would give the Vandals the options to reinforce Carthage or attack from another angle. Unfortunately for the Vandals, all the hilly terrain, obscured line of sight, and coordination between these three groups was lost. Now, it's not clear if Belisarius knew what was happening or if he was just being his normal, cautious self. But he detached 600 Huns to the salt fans and sent 300 of his household guard, the Bukalari, under the command of John the Armenian, to scout the narrow passage ahead. 
The rest of his forces, some 1,500 troops, remain close to the coast. This is where the hunter becomes the prey. Now, the Vandals' ambush isn't expecting an enemy attack. And this is when the Huns discover Gibbon's cavalry. Gibbon's cavalry loses their cohesion, and a majority of 2,000 men are killed on the spot. It's speculated that even though the Hun Empire has fallen, Huns still have a very fearsome reputation, and that these Vandals weren't too happy to see them. Around the same time this is happening, John the Armenian is leading the Bukhari and comes across the forces of Amatus, who once again is unaware of an impeding attack, and his forces are spread out piecemeal through the passageway. Now, the passageway is narrow, and this helps the 300 Bukhari, who have heavier equipment than the men they're facing, and plus these are veterans of this countless wars in the east. These vandals try to escape, but they're chased down and killed by these Romans. Belisarius attaches a small force of 800 men to discover what occurs at the pass. Upon seeing the slain corpses of the Vandals, these men ascend to a small hill to the south of the pass to decide their next move. What that move will be, we won't find out until next week. Well, that was a fantastic review. Boy, you always raise the bar each and every week. Every time you do the research, you raise it up an- another notch, man. So good job. Oh, please. I'm serious. But unknowns to you, I'm sure, is I have a bucket list of war games that I want to play, and one of the items on my bucket list is to play a war game where I command a cavalry with a leader called Gibbamund. So I could just check that right off the list with this one. I've got the War Council, so let me open that up. And it is a five-banner affair this evening. I will take the Vandals first. I have Gibbamund and Amatus. I have four command cards only, but I do get two Inspiring Action tokens. Peter, on the other hand, has John the Armenian with five command cards and four Inspired Action tokens for the Byzantines. The only special rules tonight, if the Byzantine player manages to get a heavy or super heavy cavalry off of one of these exit points here, the four that are listed up there, then they will get a victory banner for each one. They have to be at that point and then be ordered to move off the battlefield. And everything else is listed with what does constitute bow cavalry. So we have a few light bow and uh, super heavy bow and heavy bow on the Byzantine side. But for the most part, the Vandals, no bow cavalry. Uh, That's all there is to it. So five banners, as we've seen the last couple times, uh, it could just come down to a massive punch with a super heavy, or it could just be, you know, the opportunity to run off the map. Uh, Actually, you draw yours first, because you're going first. Cut your cards, I grab mine. And we are ready to proceed. So, once again, good luck to you. I wish you luck, but you don't seem to need it lately. Oh, please, as you would say. So I'm going first, huh? Hmm... I'm going to order two on the left. Those two. And we will let loose with a hail of arrows. Well, the light bow needs to move first. The one... Because they just... doesn't have range. Uh, this one here, it needs to move one to get closer. It's got to be within three. There you go. All right. My unnamed hunt leader will attack first with two dice. Nothing. The other Huns will attack. Ooh, score hit. Ouch. But Gibbon lives for now. I think I will do a counterattack of that card. And I will do two as well. Do those two. Attack here. Can't evade, so I'll have to take it. Mm-hmm. And it will be three dice plus leader bonus. Let's 
scoring two. Two dice back. Scoring nothing. And Gibbaman will continue. You also do uh, four dice plus leader. Oof. Uh, heavy cavalry will come in and attack the unnamed Hun leader. And this time I will spend a battle bonus token. There we go. So we will attack him with five dice plus leader now. Getting three. Here is a leader check. He's fine. Nothing. Okay. Um, I think I will take that. Go back to there. I know what history says, but game-wise, light cavalry against medium and heavy, that doesn't seem to be a very winnable situation. Yeah, it's got to be a mass, I think, of some kind. All right. Forward. Kind of like that. And a token here on the battle bonus. Roll three dice. Four dice back. Uh, a hit and a retreat. All right, Hun Leader, it's all up to you. Two dice. Nothing. You failed me, Hun Leader. And four back. Just one. You need to check. He's fine. Yeah, that left flank is folly. I don't care what history says. All right, super heavy against heavy cavalry. Four dice. Ooh, brutal. Three hits. Three hits. One, two, three. Leader check. He's fine for now. I will do four back with leader. You get to ignore one sword. Yeah, but I hit twice. John will attack with four dice. Potent. Amethyst did fall in this attack. Early on, too, in fact, which demoralized his men. I'm demoralized already. Um, I'll advance. Okay. Well, sir. That uh, does present some challenges. Let's do command left. So I've got four. One, two, three, four. Where are you going? Just coming to the welcome wagon. And uh, the light bow will just take a couple shots here. Two dice. Nothing. Three in the center. Went after your longbows. What they like to do? Uh, they will evade for their very lives. Okay, more dice. Looking for green circles. One green circle. You have a shot with John if you wanted to, since they have bows. Oh, they do have bows. Um, okay. Nope. Right. Do leadership any section. Since I only have a small amount of leadership left, we'll utilize them. One, two, three. You want to spend a, an inspired action token to perform an inspired action? 
Um, I have a feeling that since I'm approaching on heavier things, you're just going to evade on everything. Since I only have one left, I will choose to withhold it. But thank you for that, okay. for that reminder, as always. Uh... We'll start here. They like to evade. They would. Okay. So here's three dice. Looking for circles. I get a circle. There's one leader check. He's fine. And Parthian shot for you. Oh, yes. Ooh. Don't. Three in the center. Okay, attacking your auxilia of John. Four dice. Mm. Three hits. One, two, three. There is three, uh, two back, and two swords will not count. But that square will. So, leader check. John's fine. Okay. This super heavy bow cavalry will shoot an arrow at those auxilia. Twang. No avail. So this bow cavalry will shoot uphill against your longbows. Don't force them back. A foot onslaught. Oh, no. Up to two hexes. Okay. So we'll go one, two, one, one, two. Okay. So we're going to get an extra die in combat. Super heavy here. Uh, mediums will be attacking. What would the super heavy like to do? We'll evade. Okay. So we're going to do four dice, looking for squares only. Getting one. John like to do? He'll stand. Okay. Um, I'm going to spend my last token for battle bonus and get four total dice on your super heavy. Getting two hits. Okay. Leader check. He's fine. Ooh, okay. So, I take a hit. Take a hit. And then I must go back one, and I can't fulfill the second. There we go. Two in the center. Those two. Charging uphill, two dice, uphill. Don't. Now they have, a, they have the opportunity to advance and battle again. So they can't advance and move one in battle. Uh, they're just heavy, yeah, they can. They can go move advance plus one. Okay. Got the longbows. Four dice. It's one hit, but a retreat. And that's finish enough to off. finish them, yes. All right, and John against the Auxilia. Now I will spend a token. Five dice here. Ooh, yeah. 
Nicely done. There you go. Getting your mojo back. Well, that left flank, that. Like I said before, I don't care what history says, that's just folly yeah. to try and attack those mediums and heavy with all these light horse. So I, that's when I decided that even though I had all center cards, the best was to try and get that right flank going up the board and try and take out those piecemeal units. I think that was a smart play because I, you know, I suspect that this one really does encourage you to go straight towards those exit points and harvesting along the way. I mean, geez, obviously you got the bonus with Amethyst, but not predicting exactly what's going to happen, but I suspect that that is very uh, enticing for me to do as well. So we will take our break here. We'll be right back. Let Peter uh, enjoy the afterglow here of of this 5-2 victory. And we'll be right back. Back with round number two. I am taking the Byzantines. Peter has given me all kinds of good ideas. Just ever forward, right? Just go, go, go. Forward, John. All right. And I believe I can get the first move, so... Let's see what we could do here. Let's do three on the left. And it will be those three. And we'll go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. Mm. That's all. Oh, wait, no, I've got shots. Look at that. Okay, Hun Leader with his bow cavalry. Take a shot at your light cavalry. Come on, flags, we've missed you. Here's one die. No. And this guy will shoot at with one die. Nothing. And then finally, one die. At your light bow. All right. Well, that's consistent. Order by heavy troops. My two leaders. Okay, and we just will attack your light bow cavalry. What would it like to do? I believe they'll evade. Okay, four dice. One hit for your trouble. Here's Parthian shot, two dice. Hey, we gotta hit back. Let's see if we strike Amethyst. Nah. Battling uphill, two dice. Uh, yep. Oh, sorry. No, no, that's okay. Yeah, we we're gonna stand anyway. Uh, okay, so that's a hit. Leap check. Oh! <laughs> oh! I hate dice games so much. So very, very, very much. Oh, wait, that's you. Okay. You struck my own leader. Um, so, now I have to take that banner because uh, the leader is dead. He's dead, Jim. One. Two, three, uh, four. Isn't that interesting? So I will advance and go after your light bow cavalry. What would it like to do? Uh, they'll stand. Okay. Still two dice, hill to hill, right? Yep. <sighs> Hit the retreat. I'm making poor choices tonight, sir. One, two. Hmm. I believe it's time to cry havoc. Cry havoc. Let's slip the horses of war. All right, so five cards, five dice. Uh, <laughs> no mediums. So I can move a, f a unit with a flag. 
I just can't battle. So, do a green. One, two, three. Basically, two of my choice. Like so. This one cannot battle because it was my choice. Or the banner, or flag, whatever. This one can shoot a bow here. So we will shoot one bow at Amethyst. One additional die, okay. So we're going to get two dice on Amethyst. No. And then from this one, same. Target, two dice on Amethyst. Nothing. Okay. So now we're going to reshuffle the deck. Draw and back to you. And we both get an inspired action token. Coordinate an attack. Okay. Longbows will take a few shots at John. Nothing. Well, retreat if you want to take it. We'll stand. Medium's attacking uphill. They'll stand. Okay, two dice. Retreat. Have no bows on my horses, so I am done. Do a command center. Do all five of these. Super heavy against your light bow first. Um, four dice plus leader. Yeah, I think that takes them out. Super heavy will advance one. Battle again. I will spend a token for a battlefield bonus. Get five dice plus leader. Three. Nothing. Okay. Uh, super heavy. We'll shoot a bow. One die. Retreat. Okay. Uh, light bow. Shoot at them with one die. Other two will not battle. Scout with Gibbon. Attack that light bow cavalry. I will spend a token since I'm going to get one anyway. Three dice. One hit. Just one. Hit. Okay. Two back. Nothing. Okay. So I get a token. And draw two cards. Say forward. No six. Let's do this. Three, four. Okay. A lot 
lot of moving, a lot of moving parts. Mm -hmm. Let's do. Let's do light bow against your auxilia. Two dice. Send him packing. Unless you want to spend a token. I will spend a token on bravery to ignore one of those flags. Okay. Um, okay. They will stand. Light bow will just shoot from there. One die. Nothing. Super heavy. Shoot from there. One die. Nothing. And... Super heavy there. One die. Hey! Scare them away with our hail of arrows. Alright, next order. That is the all. Three on the left. Those three. Medium's attacking first against your light bow cavalry. They roll three dice. Indeed. Oh. Oh. Auxilia is going to throw a spear. Okay. At your light bow cavalry. Let me do that. Okay. Play a leader. Look at that. You got a leader's card. <laughs> and only one leader. Come on, John. All right. So we're going to activate him. He's going to battle with one additional die. Two to there. Actually... Let's go there. They will, whoops, will attack them, and it will be five dice plus leader. Three. Ouch! Three dice back. One. One. Leader check. Where are my heavy troops? Okay, going out to that light cavalry. What would it like to do? Uh, we will evade. Two dice. Green circle for your troubles. Here is a Parthian shot. Same exact thing. No strings. All right. Attacking that light cavalry? Mm, this one, yes. It's definitely a lead. Okay. Nothing. I'm going to attempt to rally. Get five dice here. One green. One green. One green. One green. Okay. Well, there's that one. He rallies. Goes one, two, three. Will attack. How bold. Mm. Two dice plus leader. Bravery. Mm-hmm. Okay, fighting back with three dice. I keep forgetting about these tokens. Wow. Oof. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. One, two, three, four. So I will spend one token for bravery myself and just take the other one. One, two, three, and four.
Medium troops. Okay. Soldiers attacking your heavy cavalry. What would you like to do? Uh, we'll first strike. Oh, first strike? Yeah. Um, that was not that was not one of the options I was considering. That's right. Come on, John. Four dice plus leader. One hit. My dice have gone super duper cold. All right, three dice. Nothing. Hmm. Do two on the right. I'm gonna attack there and I'm gonna spend a battlefield token. Battle bonus. It'll be five dice plus leader. Just one hit, man. And they're supported, so they will not fall back. Nope. And they'll come back at you with three dice. Nothing. Okay. And down here. Uh, against the auxilia, four dice, straight up. Hit and potential retreat, unless you wish to spend. Two dice back. Ooh. Square. All right. Three on the right. After your light cavalry with three dice. Hits. Two. There's a two back. There's a flag. Okay. Three more dice. We we'll evade this one. Coordinate an attack. Oops, three. Trying to get one more banner. One, two, three. Uh, one, two. And he will come off map. All right, um, light cavalry will just throw some spears at Amatus, hill to hill, one die. Nothing. Leadership any section. Those two. Three, one, two. Two dice uphill. Evade. Do a line command. It'll be John. John will go there. John will attack. Four dice plus leader. I'll get it done. Be like John. John will advance. Then we'll spend one token for battlefield bonus. It'll be five dice plus leader. John 
gets it done. Wow, we tied, man. Yep. That's awesome. Really trying to squeak out another banner out of you, but it's hard. Yeah, Honestly, I, I it, thought you it, might it, go after this one here, because then I didn't have an evasion. So I was I was sniffing that one out, and you went after this one. I was like, oh, thankfully I could get away. But uh, yeah, if you'd gone there, I would have had to take it. Um, yeah, this one's I I like that there is a diverse path of things that you can do to victory. Uh, the fact that it is our final score, of course. Peter took the first game, five two. I took the second game, five two. So we both have seven banners for the night. Uh, I. I, I don't know, there's just something about this first phase of Decimum that, I don't know, it tickles my brain because of the exit points and there's such a small counter des density of things that you can potentially do. And card management was really critical for me on this one. I had a lot of stuff that I was like, eh, I could do that, but is that optimal? And, uh, of course, I wanted to really exploit the right side there, but uh, I had nary a right card. So I had to use every little crumb that I could do otherwise. What are your thoughts on this one? It's hard from the vandals without any without any bows. Yeah, I, I had a tough time getting going here. I got lucky taking out the hunt leader, but other than that, yeah, I only got one of your blocks down. There were a few insults in this game, uh, the second game specifically, losing the hunt leader, which that's always disheartening when it happens, especially because the Byzantines only have you know, John and him on that side. Uh, but two critical attacks or uh, the rally attack and the cry havoc attack, the dice were, were m mid and cool for me tonight. They were very temperate. So, uh, but they still got it done for you in the end. They did. They did because I had to overcome the obstacles Had that Rocky montage in my brain. So. Well, then uh, we will move on from here to phase two. This is a three part trilogy about Tessimum, so I will be taking the next little nugget of the storyline. So stay tuned, folks. It's going to be here next week. Until such time, of course, we thank you for being here. Those of you who have just discovered the channel, I'm getting some new subscribers, so welcome aboard if this is your first video. Please, we got plenty of curated content back there on the old playlist to keep you busy for... It's kept us busy for three years, so depending on how often you watch them, you could buzz through in a few days uh click to like and subscribe that's what we ask each and every week anything else for the good of the order i think he covered it all awesome well thank you everybody for watching we will see you next time for phase two of decimum